Man, it was everything we thought about every day. It was, you know, what we dreamed about when we went to sleep, you know. We just wanted to be fly. They was going to school with the white boys and them. They were wearing the polo, but they weren't wearing it the way we were doing it, you know. We added that ghetto and that hood fabulousness to it. When you wear this thing, man, it was pretty much like you the young Jesus of the days, man. This is the story of the fashion renaissance that undoubtedly left its mark on New York City. Polo was a way of life. <laughs> 5105 one home of the Breakfast Club, Angie Martinez, that hip hop and R&B, it's your main man, and easy it is, the Sunday sit down, and today, it's my countrymen, I'm from Haiti, <laughs> I'm not from Haiti, my parents are, are from Haiti, I'm Haitian, I was born here, okay. but, but here's my friend, my good friend DJ Scribbs in the building, what's up? Well, I'm all right. How you doing, man? I can't complain. Tell me about this 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 documentary first. Well, off. the documentary is a very epic documentary. It's uh, it's about the young Haitians growing up in Brooklyn, New York, during the '80s and the '90s. Stop right there. <laughs> Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. See, now I'm giving away my age. Um, my cousin, my cousin's in here too. He'll be able to verify the story. Um, I have cousins in Brooklyn. I'm I'm the oldest of a lot of, of right. cousins, brothers and sisters. So we go out to Brooklyn to meet our cousin. Remember Wony and them. Um. Well, I've got my bike. Familiar. I've got my bike. <laughs> all right, let's do I'm it. I'm from Jersey, all right? Let's do it, let's like do six it. six or seven years old. These Brooklyn kids are like, yo, yo, what's up? And they were speaking to me in credit. What, what year was that? <sighs> Had to be 92, Oh, maybe. That, that was that was the I'm going to get you yet. Uh, <laughs> you know yeah, they got me, God, all right? <laughs> there you go. I'm was, riding my bike. That like, was that me, year, let, 92. Let me try your bike to the corner. That's Well, you especially bikes, still, man. You're coming home with that. I'm we still gotta, waiting on that bike, God. <laughs> They're going to take that. So you know? tell me about this, this the 80s and well, 90s in the, Brooklyn, because from my experiences, I hated Brooklyn. Uh, I well, it. I hated it too, but now I love it. You know what I'm saying? Coming Likewise. from coming from, you know what I'm saying, Haiti at the age of, you know, six, seven years old, 1985, it was very live, you know what I'm saying? And it was very different. And and when I came here, and all my Haitian people, when we came here, most of them, they went through all of this, you know what I'm saying, trial and tribulation in terms of adjusting. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't easy. Speaking with an accent, you know what I'm saying, not being able to speak, period, dressing like a little Frenchy boy. And when you go to school, people start picking on you. Oh, you know see, what I'm saying? And, I know that it, like it, it, it was vicious. It was, HBO, it was deadly. Haitian body odor. I'm, HIV and all that. Haitian go back to Haiti. And you know what I'm saying? We had to assimilate. We had to adapt. You know what I mean? We had to get with the Timberlands. It, it, wasn't, we to, it, it wasn't like it is now where nah, Haitians nah, are very is, prominent. Look, Before, my, look, if you were check, in the West Indians, you were Jamaican, and that was it. Haitians doing that thing. My name is Dr. Romulus. You yes. know what I'm saying? I'm a clinical pharmacist. Okay. You know what I mean, it's just that I grew up in the streets of Brooklyn, New York, and the hood is still with me. You know what I mean? I could dive a day hey, where I want. You know what I mean? <laughs> got I can do that. But when I'm in the office, very um articulative and, and speak properly, deal with my patients, customers, whoever. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I'm a Brooklyn cat, mm -hmm. and I love that, and I'm not going to change for anybody. Got I you. can move out there to Long Island. I have families in Jersey, but I'm a Brooklyn kid. I'm staying here. I'm staying in Brooklyn, you know what I mean? And, I, and I'm going to put it on for my people on every level. And, and my movement is just to bring awareness of how resilient, tough, smart, intelligent, and how much we contributed to humanity as a whole, you know what I'm saying? Because our story is very rich. And even me, when I was over here, I mean, meaning when I was growing up, I ain't known about Haiti. I came here very young. And when I got to college, that's when I went back and did my own research. Because I didn't learn these things in Washington Irving no. or staying out in college or LIU getting my doctorate. I learned these things on my own. You know, little barbershop talk, two cent leave at chasers like this. Island. I'm like, what's that? <laughs> and then I start, you know, Googling stuff, going to the library. And I find out, you know what I'm saying, we were about to free the whole world. You know what I'm saying? And how, to you, him. how you think now Turner got it? He heard about the revolution booming in Haiti, and then he like, yo, we ain't slaves no more. You know what I'm saying? What you think happened in a, a, a revolutionary war? You know what I mean? Hastings fought over there. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is- I should have worn my flag. <laughs> Bam. I got my flag. There you know you what I mean? I got you know it all, all day long. So there you go. You know what I'm saying? So all of this thing coming here, you Americanizing, so you kind of like losing bits and pieces of yourself to fit and to speak with the accent. And then when I, when I kind of- got on the level where, you know, people saying, yo, you're not Haitian. Why you sound like like this? I thought I was American. Because you had to be in self-denial to fit in. There's a lot of dudes out there that still fake. 
I mean, I'm sorry for using because I'm aggressive go ahead, and, and go I ahead. have to be chill with that. <laughs> There's a lot of dudes out there who's still on some subliminal stuff, trying not to say they're Haitian. Well, to me, being Haitian is a beautiful thing. It's, amazing. It's, it's it's an amazing thing, and there's nothing wrong with that. And you know, back in the days, people were afraid to speak with an accent. I don't give a damn now. Mm -hmm. I speak with an accent. That's everybody got an accent. Everybody's, Everybody everybody's has from one. somewhere. Everybody's from somewhere. This is the land of immigrants. Mm -hmm. So why should I be embarrassed to talk and to be myself? So the Haitian Polo documentary, in a sense, kind of you know put all of these essence together in terms of how we are simulated into hip hop and the fashions and. And, and, and the communities and the different schools and all that, what we had to do to, you know what I'm saying, to find our way. And me being on the level where I'm at right now, I feel as if I, I need to teach. And I was a science teacher, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So I need to really take all of these things that I learned to pass it down. Because if we don't teach each other and the young people, they're going to be victims. They're going to be victimized. And I was I, I almost became a victimized because... I mean, I almost became a victim because there was a point in time I didn't want to listen to no Haitian music. If it's not hip-hop, I'm not listening to it mm -hmm. because that's how much the level of inferiority got. And that's wow. how much ignorant it got. And some people got lost in the battlefield. You know what Talk to me about what fashion means to you. Oh, man. Because you have polo in the documentary. How does that polo, work in? A lot of people, it's kind of weird for a lot of people who did not grow up in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York... Was, it's kind of like the Mecca when it comes to fashion. During the 80s, you know what I'm saying, late 80s, Polo ran supreme. Late 80s, early 90s, Polo was the brand to have. You know what I'm saying, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93. Imagine you're a young Haitian immigrant, you're not fly, you're in trouble. So you gotta get, you gotta get your gears, you gotta get your Polo, you gotta get your guests, you gotta get your Tim Boots, you gotta get your Tommy, and when you go to school, and the funny thing is some of us had an accent, but we look so fly, they had to accept that, oh man, this is a fly Haitian over there, but he's still Haitian, but he fly. And that, we kind of use the Polo as a, as a way to cross over, to, to kind of shield in, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, and eventually, little by little, we started picking up the lingo and starting to want to rap and all of that and, and be part of society, you know what I'm saying? Be part of the mainstream urban culture. Okay, now, you know what I'm see, saying? as I'm talking to you now, and I remember and I lived through a lot, some of these things. Even my, your man, DJ South, Nori's a low head. <laughs> no, we know Nori. Listen, um, <laughs> as, well, like I said, going through it, I feel like, it, uh, are you showing the other part of it? Because there's there's parts of it where the kids the simulate you want to assimilate to to being cool. Because I remember I wanted to wear the baggy jeans and the thing, but Mom Dukes wasn't having that. Hell fam. yeah, and th that's another thing. So Damn, it's like my, it's what? like a it's like a two edge edges edges sword. Like w when you home, you, I, look, I came from a gospel background, Protestant. My father ain't trying to hear that hip hop stuff. No, my father ain't trying to hear that baggy stuff, and I, and that's why I became a doctor. You know what I'm saying? He he want me to come home, put my book on the table, and study hard. But Eric B and Rock was calling me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love Cool J's calling me. Got gotcha. you. So when I come home, I have to be that good kid. Cause all we knew was Wolf, that's baton, right. Baton, baton, baton. And this is the three L's. A lot of people want to know what the three L's leg, are. Leg, 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 Mm -hmm. And when I realized at the age of, well, I mean, I ain't going to tell my age. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it, that was the right thing. I'm like, thank God I listened to my dad. I could have been one of those this, dreamers in the street. You know what I'm saying? And, and and I'm not trying to disrespect anybody, but I feel like the story that I have to tell, it's not even my story. It's, it's a Brooklyn story that needs to be told on the highest level. It's just like the Italians, when they came here, they had their stories, the Jews had their stories. We have our stories too, you know what I'm saying? And, and I feel that it's appropriate. It's very important because a lot of young Haitians, they don't understand. They're walking on flatbush like somebody did not get smacked for them, you know what I'm saying? Somebody had, did not have to pull a knife out for them. Mm -hmm. Somebody did not, have put, did, did not have to put in the work. So they have to understand all of that 
another for the community to come as a whole and for us to move forward. Because some of them think, because they're popping right now, they they hot, they, they, they disrespecting the pioneers. No, nah, you can't disrespect the person who laid the foundation. You can't disrespect the person who got smacked up in the hallways. Mm-hmm. That's the person you got to look up to. So now, okay, uh, okay. <laughs> this, this, this is, this is a, a, a discussion I have with a lot of young rappers that I, I encounter. How do you... How do you give respect to the elders without feeling like you're being sunned and still being able to do your own thing? How <sighs> is there a medium for me to show enough respect to these old heads and still do me and not feel like they're sunning me? Of course, we have that in the Asian culture. You have to respect your elders. It, uh, respect respecting somebody is is the greatest form of humility. You know what I'm saying? You, I respect Rakim. As far as a rapper. I would look up to Rakim. I I would give him all that, you know, all the respect that he deserved. But you know, we're in a new generation. I would do what I need to do to come up as an artist. You respecting somebody doesn't mean that person's sunning you. And guess what? That's the problem we had on our block. See, I, <laughs> you I'm just giving you what I we, you know what I'm saying. We, everybody want to be the man, but that's not that, that's not the right way. You can show somebody respect, and you still the man. You still do you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for example, J Cole respect Nas a lot. J. Cole is the man, right? J. Cole, you know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna save her. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's that's the man, right? Um, Kendrick Lamar. He respect NWA a lot, right? And he's still the man, right? You know what I'm saying? When you and first of all, artists, you know, I'm I'm in this artist thing a little bit. I did my thing. When an artist show pioneers respect, that shows a lot. That shows that he knows the culture. That shows not that shows that he's doing his research and that shows that he wanna take the game to the next level. When you see these little arrogant, egotistical people coming on board and they're trying to shove the OGs on the side, that said a lot about them in terms of how they came up, in terms of their level of respect, in terms of their homes. You know what I'm saying? Respect means a lot. And then one with respect in the OGs, man. Got you. You know Sunday what I mean? Sit down, your main man, M Easy, <laughs> my Haitian family in the building, DJ Scribs. Um, now, talk about how long it took you to make the movie. Well, first of all, first right? of all, I got to shout out my crew, man. That, that movie was very painful, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to ATAC, shout out to Cube Effect, shout out to um, Khalil, um, shout out to, my, I mean, uh, Love is Blind, my man, um, Wanley. It took me about two years to, um, to get that movie out the way because it was my first production, you know what I mean, in terms of putting a film together because I work... I work in a health setting, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. P- putting the film together, it's like far facts. So I, you know, I have a little money, call up some homies of mine, you know what I'm saying, that's very good with camera, like my man Q Burrow. You know, we start, we sat down and, and we came up with the with the script, we came up with the ideas, and, and Cube, Cube did a wonderful job in terms of cementing everything together. So it took me about two years, and you know, I got it processed over and over, and the movie's kinda, very solid, and everybody who watched the movie, and they they love they love they love the whole concept of it. So I advise all the listeners out there who's listening, look for the Haitian Polo documentary. It's available on VHX. It's not a shallow film. It's a very educated piece that talks about you know the Haitian Revolution. That talk about how young Haitians got together. That talk about you know us you know assimilating, acculturating in Brooklyn, New York, and NYC as a whole. So it's a very great piece that will educate you know everybody, especially if you want to get in this this hip hop game. You need to know the roots. You know what I mean? So it took about two so years. What do you What do you want people to take away from it? So well, uh, my, my, all right, next, the the question I really want to ask: If I'm not Haitian, why would I watch this film? The film is more than just being Haitian. You know That's why I'm asking. If you you will see how other people interacted with the Haitians. When I said, for example, not every American kid or Jamaican kids was picking on the Haitians. You had other kids that was looking out for the the Haitians who were not Haitians. So you will see how we came together as a community to kind of relate to each other. You know what I'm saying? And and there's, for example, Bookman. Bookman is not Haitian. Book money's Jamaican, you know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you will see how we came together as brothers and sisters to kind of relieve uh, all the things that we lived back in the days, you know what I'm saying? So you will take a lot out of that, man. And you, you you will go beyond uh, the Haitian perspective of the film because a lot of people call me and they're like, yo, script, I didn't know this thing was going to be that deep. I thought you were going to talk about Polo. I'm, I'm like, yeah, that's the cast 22. 
You know, I watch I watch Puffy take me to the Greek. You know what I'm saying? My effing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> there you, go. you know what I'm saying? Yes. So so that's what I did, and it kind of worked. And you know, the only problem, right? Well, it's no problem. Life just have challenges. You know, you just got to deal with the challenges. And you just, you know, my thing is, I want to take this film to a higher plateau than than where it's at right now. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I'm looking for help on every level as possible. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I appreciate you, and I, and I know the culture is gonna appreciate. Appreciate you when they get a chance to put their eyes on this movie, Thank the Haitian Polo documentary. I uh, appreciate you for coming by. Man, I, I respect um, that. How, how can they get in contact with you if they want to get in touch? Well, I'm, I'm always on social media. You know what I did to you. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, man. You know what I'm yes. saying? I'm always on Instagram, the Haitian Polo documentary, underscores in between all the words, DJ Script. Uh, Script is spelled S-C-R-I-P-Z. I'm on Twitter, DJ Script again. Um, same thing, uh, S-C-R-I-P-Z. I'm on Facebook, the Haitian Polo Documentary Film, the Haitian Polo Documentary Group, and I also have my website, www.thdpf.com, thdpf.com, so you can find it there. And you know what I'm saying? I'm always on the gram, man. Shoot me a gram, slide in my DM, no other crazy stuff, and we'll talk. And I, you know what I'm saying? I'm always down for a conversation because my whole thing is it goes beyond being Haitian. My thing is I'm more into things that are serious in my community. You know what I'm saying? I would like to be that voice to put my people together, and we get this, you know what I'm saying? And I'm a self-taught businessman. So I would like to, it's not easy. It ain't going to be easy. It ain't nothing easy. No. Getting to Power 105 was not easy, but not I'm here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, it's, it takes a lot of work, and, and you know, you just got to believe in yourself. And, you know what I mean? Check me out on the gram, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Check the Haitian Polo documentary. It's available. It's available on VHX.com um, under the name The Haitian Polo Documentary by DJ Script. But you just got to subscribe. It's free subscription, and you put it up, and you learn a lot, man. And you will hit me up and thank me later, man. That's what I'm about. I'm about putting that solid information out there. You know what I'm saying? Got you. And that's what I do, man. I'll be sitting up. I'm going to watch this one with my mom. Because you didn't watch it yet? No, I haven't. I haven't got a chance to listen. I just got a newborn, 10 months old, running around oh, these man. streets. Oh, man. Come I got on, no chance, man. I man. thought you watched the film. But I'm, I'm going to sit down and watch man. it with my I mom. I sent you the film like 10 times. <laughs> you, you sent me a lot of stuff more than 10 times, man. <laughs> yo, yo, grind. You got to grind. I you know what I'm saying? I get it. It's called that's persistence. Right. Persistence. That's right. And that's what this whole industry is about. Don't give up. You know, there's a there's a lot of wonderful people in the industry. At the same time, you know, there's people that's doing what they do in the industry. But just keep solid. Absolutely. And, keep, and do your Appreciate thing, Appreciate you man. for coming by. It's a Sunday sit-down. DJ Scripps. I'm easy. We're in the building. Take it easy. You know what I mean? Let's do it. <laughs> Another example of how easy does it. Who y'all want?